Hey everybody, I'm George Affleck. And I'm Jody Vance. And this is... Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> and spun! I wondered why you wanted to do that. You wanted to switch your <laughs> today? I and love right. birthdays. I love birthdays, and I especially love birthdays when we can use it as a countdown clock to something that I am definitely looking uh -huh. forward to, which is October 15th, 2022. Why, George? Uh, it's my birthday again. It is. What would you like for your gift? I should write that down. I would like the, the gift of a normal city council in Vancouver. It's election anyway, day in Vancouver, across the province, all the municipal elections on October 15th, one year uh, from the day this, I guess, we're recording us on the 14th. Tomorrow's the 15th, so kind of run then. Uh, yeah, so we have an election, and we'll know who the new mayor of Vancouver is, the new mayor of all the towns um, across BC. So it will be an interesting uh, time. It's already started. The, the it's already started. campaigns have already started. I was listening to you on the Jazz Joe Hall show uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, which is October the 13th. Mm -hmm. I tuned in to hear you sort of round out and round up what your ex yes. expectations are with regard to this this huge municipal election frankly it is huge that we've been talking about it for months already we're a year out mm -hmm. as of the 15th of october and now we're going to look in, into it so just give us the coles notes version of who's in who's running for mayor so far who you speculate might join the group uh and and then we'll get into some of the, the platforms it, and it's such. It's so long I have to turn my page over to get my notes because there's so many parties. Like, come on, there's so many parties. Come on, get your notes. Because we have, last night there was a fundraiser or, or something uh, for Ken Sims' party, the Better City, ABC party. He hates it when I call it that. Ken Sim ran for the mayor of Vancouver under the MPA banner. Didn't win for some strange reason. <laughs> I don't know how he managed to blow that one. Uh, so then, uh, then you have John Cooper in the MPA. He's got the nomination for that. And by the way, Ken Sim got the nomination for a better city without anybody uh, competing with him. What a, he said he wanted competition, but nobody stepped up. What a shocker! Hmm. John Cooper MPA. Then we have one city, and then we have no, no mayoral candidate at this point. But I wouldn't be surprised if they push forward with one. Uh, and you got Cope. You got Vision Vancouver coming back. We can talk more about that. Green Party. Will they run a candidate for mayor? team with uh, Colleen Hardwick running for mayor, uh, then a bunch of other councillors who are independents, potentially, who's, are they going to form another party? Are they going to join the party? And mm -hmm. then, of course, we have Kennedy Stewart, the lone, uh, you know, independent current mayor, uh, incumbent, said he's running again. So there's lots of, you know, potential mis mixes here. And then the rumored one, of course, which I've talked about on the show here before, is Jody Wilson-Rabel. And will she go with Vision Vancouver? Uh, there were some rumors yesterday, and he certainly wasn't dampening. He certainly wasn't stopping these rumors with Paul Nixie, who was a major insider with the Vision Vancouver team, uh, rumored to be thinking about running for council for Vision Vancouver, and he has not squashed or quashed those rumors. Um, so uh, that the, the likelihood he's a big federal liberal. He's big. He's a part, was a machine behind Hetty Fry for a long time. Uh, mm. He now is out of politics behind the scenes because he's working a new job something. But uh, so, but he is, I would be not, you know, the Vision Vancouver team coming together uh, must have an idea that they're going to have a strong mayoral candidate. And I would put money on it. it might be Jody Wilson-Raybould um, or somebody else of significance. And then, of course, we have Mark Marison, too, the Mark Party. I uh, forgot about that one. He's also running for mayor, former uh, spouse of Christy Clark, major backroom guy for many, many years, federal liberal as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I mean, the federal liberal party is well represented by many candidates. And, and I've talked about this a lot, the mushy middle in Vancouver. You win. Federal liberals are what is how you win in Vancouver. You can't be too right. You can't be too left. You got to be kind of floating around the middle, attract the people who are mostly, you know, on, on the center part of the political spectrum. And so we have several candidates who are known federal liberals uh, doing the dance here. And so you know, it's going to be interesting. And uh, I think the biggest challenge is that most of those people are considered to be right of center. So blue federal liberals, uh, right. you know, Paul Martin kind of federal liberals. Whereas, so the left side right now really only has uh, Kennedy Stewart. So he's sitting pretty. I would say that, and I've said this before, if it keeps going the way it's going, uh, unless Vision Vancouver puts somebody strong in there, 
Kennedy Stewart can walk on through and win again, no problem. See, and I'm just going to jump in here with just when you say Jody Wilson Raybould, for many that's a, like, wow, so many credentials, so many reasons, so many for that mushy middle to be like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. she's the obvious choice. But then you put her under a vision banner and there are a bunch of people that be like, never, I can never vote vision again. <laughs> Ugh, people say that, but you know. Then they hold their nose and do it anyway. Do they care yeah. about the party that much when they're outside of the inner circle? The it just felt like vision was very voted out, right? No, they didn't They didn't run a mayoral candidate. I think Greg right, Robertson would have would would won again. If he'd run for really? mayor, he would have won again. 100%. Really? 100%. Wow. Yeah, because Shauna Sylvester, Shauna Sylvester wouldn't have run. She right. ran in the last election as an independent, no money. She screwed up. She no screwed over profile. the Ken Sim plan, right? She took votes from both sides uh, everywhere. Yeah. So she got about thirty-five thousand votes. Uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of MPA people went over to her. A lot of federal liberals who would vote for a moderate uh, candidate um, right. or somebody who didn't go get a book signed by uh, by Chip Chip Wilson, who you know. Uh, <laughs> Impressive person, but not well loved because he's seen as a Vision Vancouver person. And so when right. Ken Sim went over there, people, went, oh, Ken Sim, he's just like Vision Vancouver. Then the leap of logic in politics is uh, is a short one. It really is. So let's get into some of the platforms, though, that we know up to this point. Mm -hmm. So you were literally talking about this, and you know the noise began. I was listening to you on the radio and my phone in my hand and up pops the team Kennedy Stewart spam mail that I don't uh -huh. even know how I got on a mailing list for and oh. it showed up. Yeah, I don't. I didn't sign up for you anything. You should uh, file to the uh, you know uh, castles and spam and say you've been spammed. No, if you're I elected, should. he's a, he, as an elected person, he's allowed to send out basically emails. Right. I'm definitely be... in the city of Vancouver. Yeah. Um, well, no, he's it. not allowed to do that. Anyways. Anyway, but neither here nor there, his email out to his people uh, or constituents, I don't know, um, yes. voters, uh, was all one big long attack on Ken Sim. Like, he, it was line by line of here's what's wrong with. And I thought, wow, okay, here, here we go. <laughs> There's not a lot here about what you're going to do if reelected versus how I'm going to you know, point at the other guy. And then I was watching Global News and they were doing a story about, it was this morning, and they were doing a story about that um, mm -hmm. gathering, the announcement that that Ken Sim had on Wednesday evening. And they were like, if elected, he says he'll get rid of the park board. You know, like, <laughs> we're looking at people's platforms, right? Like, I mean, what are people sure. running on? And, what, and really more importantly on Unspun, George, what should they be running on? Mm hmm yeah, and I think Ken Sim, uh, it's interesting that, that Ken Sim is probably uh, overjoyed that uh, that email went out from uh, the mayor because it uh, legitimizes him uh, as a candidate. Obviously, they've polled and he's, he's, he's getting some traction. They know there's a lot of money behind him. He's even yeah. talked about how much money. Where is that money coming from? Nobody's quite sure. It's not individual donors. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, until January the, of 2022, there's you have more freedom to take in funds and where the funds right. come from than you do after January 1st. Um, so that's, uh, cause it's know, in the right? election calendar year, right? Like that's the, yes, what you were just saying there. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So these are things so, that most of us don't know, George. I know. So in You're election, it's like a, I know there's a, it's like a $1,200 individual donation to a person or to a party, but not to both. Right. So you can, if a person's a member of a party, they can donate to the party slash person, but they can't do it twice. So you, right now, though, you can you can pay for operations and rent. All these there's lots of loopholes right now until January first, right. and that's what he's taking advantage of. Things like software and and database assist, you know, all that kind of stuff is really expensive, and you can get all that into your ahead uh, uh, ahead of the game if you have the cash. Now, most people don't have the cash this far out though, but he does. So yeah. uh, you know, I think that. He probably took that as a as a as a as a, a huge compliment that Kennedy Stewart sees him as a threat. Um, uh, so it's it's going to be interesting. The the money at this point looks like it's going to be behind you know uh, you know Kennedy Stewart and and Ken Sim at this point, unless John uh, Cooper can pull together some cash uh, and get the you know the developers and the and in individuals supporting the NPA. It's a tough road for him for sure. Um, and then you have Mark Marison, who's well versed with that whole world. But you know, money matters. It really makes a difference in an election campaign. You win through yeah. advertising and through 
getting enough people to get out there and do the work that needs, needs to be done. It's not free. And uh, you, it's more challenging now because of the limits. Um, so the earlier you start raising that 1200 bucks, 1200 bucks, 1200 bucks, you can get, you're going to need a million dollars uh, in Vancouver to win. So whoever yeah. has the million dollars, uh, you know, and I bet Kenny Stewart will raise a million. I'm sure Ken Sim will raise a million. And I think John Cooper, Cooper could probably raise a million. Um, so we've had campaigns in the city that were more, that surpassed $3 million in total uh, funding uh, earned three, through three million? donations. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think I think Vision, and the rules changed since then, but the money's still out there. It's just got to do it differently. I think Vision right. raised, I think it was $1.8 million in the 2014 election. Uh, and NPA, I think, raised $1.2 or something. So that was $3 million just in two parties. So it's, but then you got to get the uh, messaging out, right? I mean, mm-hmm. um, was it Hector Bremner? I think it was who was like holding on to that booklet. That booklet costs money. Hand out the booklet. You got to, you know, but you got to have something that goes in the right, but in the booklet. Like, what does it st- what does it say on the winner's booklet? You know, what's the what's the yeah, your your what's the your... wedge issue or the driving issue? Right? Oh yes, yeah, so, yes. Well, I think. You know, we've already seen, uh, you know, the issue, you know, we all, we always hear about housing and homelessness and all that stuff's always important. Um, And of course, yeah. And we've heard a lot of other, other, the sort of typical issues, but the one that, and you've written about it this week, uh, you know, is crime. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're seeing, and we've talked about this in the last few shows and I've always been, you know, had problems with this as far as where the money's being spent. The, the the broken windows concept, which yeah. is literal now. It's literal. It's, it's not literal. even a metaphor. You've been talking not, about the metaphor. It's not a metaphor. 143 anymore. podcasts <laughs> right. we've done. 143 yeah. in every single one. The, our very, very, very first podcast we did, we were talking Oppenheimer. And you brought up the these camps, crime. Yeah. Is somebody going to die? And you, we've been literally talking about this now for years, George. Yeah. And and Kenny Stewart has proven, and I've written, I wrote an op-ed about this, saying that at that the op-ed was focused for Vancouver Awesome. Vancouver's Awesome was focused on uh, the other campsite that came up after Oppenheimer, which was down in Strathcona, and I said this would be one of the defining issues. And I and I think people mis kind of are misconstruing that. Say, oh, I see that tents are gone, the parks were no. It's about it's about how you approach uh, governance and crime and policing. And he's right. clearly. Uh, against the the city of Vancouver's police, he doesn't. I don't even know if he and the chief of police talk anymore, which is insane. Um, it's terrifying. So it's you terrifying. Know, have, As a woman, yeah. can I tell you, with the number of uh, assaults that are happening all over Metro Vancouver, but specifically like in Vancouver proper, it yeah. it's no longer the city that it once was. For and that's one of the reasons why you know, and in my column, it, it's about video surveillance. Maybe it is yes. time. To have and and it was brought up. It was um, Charles uh, Gauthier actually retweeted that and said, you know, when I was head of the the Vancouver Business Association, he's like, I yes. suggested that the cameras stay after the Olympics, and yes. it was like, no. And it's like, well, do you think that perhaps they were onto something at the Olympics that <laughs> if something were to happen, that they would have some evidence to and the the people that are coming at me going. You know, it's it, it's racial profiling. It's this. It's that. So it's like it's an idea. Like we have to start somewhere. Yes. Having proof helps catch the bad guy, and and stop. And I wrote about that with the Granville Island, the private security camera in Granville Island helped mm-hmm. catch the the pedophile that was groping children. I mean, we it it worked. Like, why wouldn't we? The people uh, that argue against cameras to me are people that don't want to be caught doing what they're doing. Uh, well, there is people who are related to civil rights that are hugely against it. I, you know, I put a motion. This is a I put a motion forward specifically related to this when I was on council to add, when the person that guy was killed at the nightclub in uh, in Granville Street. So I put a motion yeah. forward, and his family came uh, and spoke in favor. I don't remember Charles Gauthier really standing up and speaking in favor of it. To be honest, um, interestingly. Uh, I got a lot of pushback, uh, and clearly the Vision Vancouver did not support it, and it lost. Uh, what I was asking for is that you the cameras are still there, I, I learned. Yeah. They may not be now, but they were when I put this motion forward about five years ago, uh, that they're still there on Granville Street. All they have to do is turn them on. 
Um, and you know, maybe they are on, who knows? Uh, the, but it's, it's, it's funny, you know, you're, you, 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 you watch British crime shows, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, CCTV is everything. Person, are you kidding person me? They say, is like, Have you checked the CCTV? Have you checked the CCTV? Have you checked the CCTV? And, CCTV. Oh, that's your answer to that question. Yes, you're on it. Well, now we'll take you to the CCTV that says you're yeah. right there. And I know how it's, many it's arguments have just... been made from a policing standpoint, then you're not stopping people randomly in the street. You're not racially profiling and seeing what are you doing walking down there minding your own business you're actually there was a crime now we go to the tape we look at the tape we don't look into your living room window we're not you know following you I down know. the street it's in your car. intrusive governance though that's that that became yeah, the, the dominant issue of first of all if you don't trust government and we see a lot of that right now because of covid Fair. um and if and then you get conspiracy theorists uh and then yeah. so you have lack of trust you have you know future governments how do we predict the future government won't take advantage of this technology and this information to use it against you uh and so there's a good argument against it that facebook's doing it control. facebook's already doing it that's we're, my we're surrounded point. by cameras i know oh my we're God. surrounded by private citizens filming us so yeah. it's a question of whether we as taxpayers want our government being intrusive uh, with technology and cameras and watching us in every place we sit. You know, in China, they have cameras everywhere. They know where you are all the time. All China the time. Is the so I, in that, in, you know, in following people around. If you read my column, you've read my column, but I'm saying to yes. our, our listener, to our viewer, if, if you read my column, go to the orca.ca and, and read it. Lights, camera, action, hello. Um, <laughs> it's about ideas and about using this as a tool in places that are dangerous or high crime. Like you said, the Granville Entertainment District is a great example of everybody who went mm -hmm. there, even thought those cameras were on, they might behave differently. And mm -hmm. no, I'm not saying we need cameras along the downtown east side to watch people who are living in poverty and ensure that they're not, you know, it's not about the marginalized and the cherry picking. It's about being able to find the pedophile on camera in Granville Island, groping that young girl and then putting him in jail with that evidence. There has to be room for that to be part of the conversation without it becoming, no, we can't do it anywhere because it, it's wrong for, for some people. When it really can save even one kid, as a mother, as a father, I'm sure, but as like women fear and look over their shoulder far too much in cities and Vancouver and this corner of the world, the Pacific Northwest, really in Canada, has been a, a safer part of the planet. And it, I can feel it devolving. And the, the standoff I, between municipalities 100%. and the police is terrifying, George. But like so many things, it's a Band-Aid. Where do we yeah. go backwards to find out why is crime happening? Why is this? Why are people graffitiing everywhere? Why yeah. are they smashing windows? Why is there so much homelessness? Why are we, un, you know, de, you know, underhoused? Why? Why? Where did why? it change? Yeah. When? We all, when? We and where? This. We all know. It's like in the nineties, yeah. and it happened in every Western industrialized country where deinstitutionalizing people with mental health care issues and housing, federal funding, national housing programs in many many countries being cut. Because yeah. governments were in a massive move to uh, find restraint in 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 in, in spending uh, to the, yeah. the will of the people. That was something that people wanted back then, and yeah. I'm not saying for or against it. I'm always about spend your money wisely and don't waste yeah. your money in government. Uh, more of a libertarian approach to to government spending, but the priorities should need to always be the priorities and. And, and your priority as a government is always to keep your people safe and secure, and that should include yeah. housing. And how could you neglect that for so long? And it's been neglected now for those two things, mental health care and housing have been neglected for 30 years. That's an entire generation of generation. people living on the streets. These are, if you look yeah. at the data, Desperate. people living on the streets are in their 30s and 40s. Guess what yeah. happened in, in 30 or 40 years ago? We defunded institutionalization and, and mental health care programs, and we, 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 we cut the housing programs national housing program so as a result 30 years later a generation later we have more worse you know homelessness worse mental health care issues more crime um in not only vancouver in every major city in western industrialized countries this is not yeah. this is a it's We're not unique. solution simple no. uh, and today i think they announced some programs to the provincial government it's a good start um, related to mental health care, but it's 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 got to we got to move faster. And we've talked about this, like the the amount of energy and what we were able to pull off 
with COVID, the COVID hell we've been in now for almost two years. Um, but we, what we found was a cure, which for some reason people don't want to take, whatever. Oh God, we'll get uh, into that in a second. You know, it's, but we found a cure. We found a solution. We gathered as an internationally and came together to, find, to do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, we can do this. There has to be the will. To- That's it. That's it. And there it is, you know, because there, there is a way. Solutions are there. The will there needs to be there and the will equals money because that's what happened with COVID is the world went, oh, shit. Well, Sorry. And the doing things come in. And, but, and, <laughs> and then doing- immediately pivoted to, to like, yeah. you know what? We never do this, which is why it was so scary. We're going to actually open the coffers. We're going to send everybody home, ask you to stay there so we can keep you mm-hmm. safe, so we can figure out what the hell is going on. Meanwhile, public health is going to take the lead and all politicians are going to come together in, in a collective. And it, when, when the political parties started pitching their flags again and sort of barking across the aisle, there was a sense of calm that returned. It's like, okay, well, here we go back to some semblance of normalcy. <laughs> we must be headed down a right path yeah. and we're back to figuring hey, are, instead yeah. of solving problems, which I think is it, your point, if, yeah, if I'm not um, mistaken. But, you know, in politics, 100%. And it's not just about money, though. There's a, there's a challenge in politics where words become dirty words and things like nuclear power. No politician wants to talk about nuclear power anymore because it's just not, you know, you know, oh God, we can't talk about that. You know, even though it could be a potential. Three mile island, solution. George. Everybody's going to die. Yeah, three mile island, yeah. Chernobyl, Chernobyl. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, but even though it's, if we hadn't, you know, if we hadn't stopped doing nuclear, uh, you know, power generation back in the seventies when all, you know, when we had all those problems in the eighties, um, yeah. we wouldn't have the climate problems we have now, even though we would have nuclear power. So you have this balance. Nobody, nobody wants to talk about it. No politicians willing to jump in that. Then it became inst- the word institutional. You don't yeah. use that word in politics. People just, oh, dare you. You want to institutionalize everybody. You're like, well, that's what they're called. They're buildings that have people who are sick in them and they're institutions. Yeah. But it became a dirty word. So politicians don't it's use like that word. It's like facility in long term care home. If you use the word facility, it's the F word. Yes. It's like, but it's exactly. okay. It's a home. It's Long-term a facility. Care. It's an institution. So, it's where the doctors are for the people who need the doctors. Yeah, you know, it's going to be. It's, let's, it's, let's pivot. Anyways, so the final, the final one, by the way, is, is just, okay. a, you know, really related to police is the latest one, right? We can't use the word police anymore. People think it's a, that's become a dirty word. You want to police this, don't you? Oh, it's like. It's crazy. Really? It's almost like I, bringing up what? bike lanes. I tell you, it's, <laughs> it's really something else. Yes, I want to police similar, this. Yeah. Yes. You can't Anyways, even to your put forward an idea. Yeah. Okay. Read no. my column, the orca.ca nice. sign up for the fin while you're there because it's, it's absolutely integral to keep up to date on stuff. It's so funny when McLean writes in the COVID, Oh, how we wish we could quit you in the fin. <laughs> That's where all the COVID-19 stories are. Cause he's like, I'm so done with this story, but he, we just can't stop. And that's where I'm going next. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry, okay. provincial health officer, um, major breaking news just before we started recording this podcast. So on Thursday, October 14th, uh, a circuit breaker, a major circuit breaker in Northern health bars and nightclubs are closed. Restaurants got to stop serving alcohol at 10 PM. Some of the places like Kitimat and Terrace are exempt because of the high vaccination rates, because it's the low vax areas that are mm-hmm. really, I mean, people are being airlifted out of ICUs there to come elsewhere. A hundred percent of the people being airlifted out have not been vaccinated. Uh, hearing Adrian Dix get more and more frustrated by the day on this is really quite something because uh, he's not one to typically be like, come on people. No, And it really very... feels like, the, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a frustration uh, piece to this. Um, mm-hmm. It was interesting, though, when Doctor. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm we, super we even saw our Minister of Health federally is also saying, "Hello, we got a cure here." Or actually, no, it's because you're feeling. It was Christian Christian. We have a cure. Yeah. We have a solution. Can we just take it? Couldn't we just? But the um, the interesting piece is we've learned and we've talked about here, as you said, for almost two years now, is that the circuit breakers are happening in more localized areas like this is happening in the Northern health region in hot mm-hmm. spots and to address these things. And Dr. Henry said, listen, if you're not vaccinated, you have to stay home. If you're not vaccinated, you can't mingle with another household. If someone in your house isn't vaccinated, you also, if you're vaccinated and they aren't, you also can't mingle with others. There are maximum 20 people outdoors, maximum 10 people indoors for fully vaccinated people. Like this is like the lockdown we saw, not lockdown. This is like the circuit breaker that we saw last fall. Um, yes. all over BC, but because so much of the province has been vaccinated, thank goodness, uh, it's not everywhere. I mean, the recovery well, she, has to she, she, has the, she has the 
she, you know, we've talked about this as well, as, fa as far as Dr. Henry was like very careful about being hardcore because you create this, you know, this division. And so now yeah. that she, we've got uh, almost pushing 90% of our problems double vaccinated, she can say, okay, okay, <laughs> free, you little zone, guess what? You don't get the freedom that we all get. And the yeah. political backlash to that and the aggressive, you know, the spin that we, you know, we talk about on the show a lot, she, they, they can't, it doesn't resonate as much because you're, you're, you've micro targeted an area uh, that doesn't, and people are everywhere else are going, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If she'd done it a year ago to the whole province in a long term way and said this hasn't been really strict like they were in other places in the world, now you're seeing real problems in Australia, New Zealand, places where they were hardcore and now they're stuck at yeah. these numbers. They just can't get people vaccinated. And you're you're going, why? Because they created this division. And Anger. now people are yeah. like they've just dug in their heels across their whole country uh to not do this. And you're like, Oh my God, like, but you know, we're sitting here going, well, why? And you know, they have their theories. It's about freedom. It's about, we don't know enough about this medication, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's, there's arguments, but it's, it's, it's but okay. Then you can enjoy your arguments, but you can't enjoy the other stuff that comes with it. And that's her point. And I think yeah, we'll see how effective it is. I think some of these people are so entrenched and so dug in. They're not, they, they still, will, okay, I'll just stay at home then and watch more Netflix. <laughs> So it's just what? terrifying, though, having, you know, COVID-19 is going to be something that hits every one of us vaccinated or not. It's mm -hmm. just if you're vaccinated, the likelihood that you will die drops dramatically, like to almost zero. I think that's the yeah. message that gets lost when you see the big protests or the anti-maskers or the the whatever freedom people I don't even it just makes me so angry in front of a hospital. I just I keep coming back to that visual or the people in front of the legislature who are barking at uh you know journalists headed in to cover government the people that are actually holding government to account on behalf of citizens mm -hmm. are getting verbally abused and spat at on their way into their offices by th these people and rob shaw actually tweeted yesterday about how it was nice to see some some pro-vaccine people out with signs to counter that anti and i was like mm -hmm. we need more pro testers like pro capital pro a couple of friends of mine it's like i would I love things, a rally we've, we've kind of got on with our lives now we're like okay you know, the, we're oh, moving on. Last, <laughs> so last year <laughs> it's so 2021 <laughs> so, uh, so early 2021 i'm so moved on i'm trying to get on with my life now can you all do that too don't you want yeah. your normal life back what's wrong with you Can, okay let's talk a little bit about boring. that before before we run out of time the border's going to mm -hmm. reopen right that's big yes. news yeah it's being great. able to go south young man uh, yes, which is where I'm, and I am south. In case you're wondering where I am, because this is not my house. Tan, I'm at a friend's, friend, I, I got a bit of a burn. I'm at a friend's place in California, and it's been an interesting experience. And I had to come down for some business stuff, and so taking some time. It's the first holiday we've had in a while, and uh, you yeah. know, but uh, and it's 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 actually not that hot here to be surprising, but um, it's been it was uh, it's 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 really really complicated and expensive to do this. Um, so, uh, and going back is super stressful. And so, yeah, when I saw that, I thought, oh, great. So that's going to be way easier. And I looked at it. Oh my God, it's the same rules that apply that I just have been, I'm going yeah. through, which yeah. coming down, no problem. You get just a simple test. It's like easy peasy, like, you know, and just a little swab and you get the results in a couple of hours. It's like no big deal. Going back there, you have to get the very serious test. It's really expensive. Um, and they, that's what they're requiring, uh, the PCR test when you go drive down. So basically if you're going down to Bellingham to shop at Target, uh, you got to get your PCR test before you leave from Canada if you're coming back the same day because you need to prove that you, have you to don't show have. You're like, and I when you're going down, two hours ago, I can't but the US, U.S. border and guards, I might have, but well, I don't know. It's an honor system headed south. So yeah. they'll be like, are you vaccinated? And you can say, yep. Yeah. And then you only get checked if you're picked to go into secondary, right? Which is, I mean, there you go. If you go into second yeah. secondary and you lied, you might as well be smuggling something because you just lied to a border official. Boom. See ya. But if you mm -hmm. get through without that PCR test and you don't know you need one and you go down and shop at your Trader Joe's. Right. And then you turn around and you come back and you get to the Canadian border and they're like, where's your PCR test? And you go, what? So you go back to Bellingham or Blaine and you can get the, you can get them in this private sector. Three or four hundred dollars for the ones you can get uh, back in an hour. So, oh, is it an hour? I thought it was two days. 
No, you can get ones in an hour now down here in the States. Um, generally, those two days, uh, those are cheaper. Uh, so yeah, you're looking at three to $400 or whatever the market bears at that time because it's private sector. As it is in Canada, by the way, if you're going down to yeah. the States right now, you have to get the uh, the normal test and it's it's it ranges from $49 to $200 depending on where you go. So for now. You, you've got to shop around for now, but it could go up to $500. Who knows? It, it, it could go up free, exponentially. Honestly. It could go yeah. up exponentially so it's, with it's that very, border opening, very, like you said, and free market. Sort of, yeah. But then you go, I'm, I'm also vaccinated and I'm careful. And I, it's, yeah. it's just all weird. But, you know, we're working our way through this. I just find it why we just have the same rules as the states going, like it's much easier to go down than to come back. Canada's I think very, the very PCR safe. test should be for unvaccinated people. Unvaccinated yeah. people. That's all. Yeah. Yep. And the you ones that are, unva- the that are unvaccinated because they've got a, an underlying health thing or whatever, or their age or what have you, then that yep. should be covered by your health. Here, here. I, if you I, choose to be unvaccinated, yeah. you pay top dollar. Period. Thanks for if coming. If you get, you, yeah, you've, and if you've been vaccinated, you should be rewarded for that. Why That's am it. I being punished for somebody who followed the rules and did what I was, you know, to, to keep me safe and to keep everybody around me safe? Why am I still being punished? I don't get it. It's not yeah. an effective approach, and it's bad optics, and it, it makes people angry. Yeah, you want to talk about so. governance? There you go. Uh, yes. You get better with age, George. Happy birthday. <laughs> It's the weather. It's the holiday, or whatever it is. And we're still working. I'm still working. Here I am working. Yeah, I got clearly. the school stuff here. I'm working. You are. You never stop working. No. Well, you're not missing much here. We've got a river of rain hitting the uh, West Coast. So enjoy I, I, SoCal. I, 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 thank you very much. I'll be back. I won't be back till the week after next. So I'll see you from here next week as well. We'll do a color match and see how much more tan you have. <laughs> go find one of those. Go to banana tans for a, for a quickie. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, George. Happy birthday. Bye. Thank you.